two stories out of Vermont that have to deal with dealership employees stealing money from their employer. Former employee pleads guilty to embezzling nearly $200,000 from Vermont dealerships. We'll touch on that in just a moment. Fraudulent lift kit selling scheme costs Vermont Nissan dealership $575,000. Seems like the Vermont you know, uh, AD's office is pretty busy at the moment that both of these stories are dealership employees doing nefarious things. In the case of this lift kit selling scheme, there was an employee who was purchasing lift kits through the, through the dealership and then selling them below what they were supposed to sell them for through Facebook Marketplace and then accepting payments through PayPal and somehow just creating a hell of a scheme here. Oh, well, he, he had the dealer, he had the, the lift kits billed to the dealership. Yep. Okay. Um, and, and the dealership paid for them. They didn't realize it. And he was selling them for less than what the dealership was paying for them. But whatever he was selling them for wasn't going back to the dealer. It was going to him. And I think when I sent you that article, I think my the words to you were, sometimes as a dealer, you have no idea what your employees are doing. And this is just a perfect example of it where – you know, he was able to, this parts manager was able to keep this going for, I don't know, a few years uh, and and took his dealership for $575,000. And in the other one, it was uh, the, the uh, comptroller or, or office manager. And she was, she was writing checks to herself. Now I can tell you from my personal experience when, I was at Admiral Nissan in Pleasantville, New Jersey. We had an assistant office manager who was fraudulently um, paying bills, oh, God. fraudulent bills that he created, um, and and he was sending checks to these companies. Um, well, the the money was actually going to him, and he was forging my name on the checks because I had check signing privileges at the dealership um, and his handwriting was much prettier than mine. So it was painfully obvious. It was not my signature, um, <laughs> but it's just, you, you can have, you can be a small dealership and have a handful of employees and still not know exactly what's going on. You can be part of a large corporate group and stuff can happen because it is so hard to track everything um that you, unfortunately you see this type of stuff in the industry go on way too often um i i would guarantee you that igor could tell some some horror stories as well um it, it's just you know it's just unfortunate that some look at their employer as a way to not only make an honest living but to augment that honest living with some dishonest activities. And yeah, ultimately, they usually get caught. Want to rescue your brand? Spend millions of dollars on a Super Bowl ad. Jeep returns to the Super Bowl, the first automaker to confirm that they are running an advertisement at the big game. Dad, I don't know. We don't know yet what the cost is to run one of these ads at the Super Bowl. But Last year, it was, what, $6 million for a 30-second spot? Something ridiculous? Something like that. So, you know, you, I'm pretty sure the, the, the cost to advertise in the Super Bowl has never gone down. Um, so even if it stayed put, it would still be $6 million or whatever it is. Um, so I guess the way to move the overpriced metal, and this is the brand who saw – the largest increase in MSRP over the last five years, 61% increase in MSRPs over that time. Um, I, I guess rather than really address the issue of lowering the damn prices of the cars and the vehicles is to spend six to $7 million for a Super Bowl commercial and hope that it's enough to move many drunk Americans to go out and buy one of those vehicles after the Super Bowl. I don't know. Yeah. It, I really don't. I, I remember the year that Minnie was so proud of themselves because they ran a Super Bowl commercial. Well, you know what that did for the Mini brand? Not a thing. Nothing. Okay. And, and 
if you're going to advertise your overpriced vehicles on a Super Bowl, I, I don't know why you think that's particularly going to move the needle when what it really might take to move the needle is to just lower the damn prices on the vehicles and 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 make them more affordable again. 